It's a great pleasure to be here, and it, it's lovely to come to a group where everybody knows about the Sargasso Sea. Uh, one, you know, one of my first, my first 20 slides are actually usually about, and I'll show them to you anyway, but they're about explaining uh, you know, where it is and what it is, etc. And uh, in fact, my favorite story is that you know, after we announced this project about three years ago, I'm, I'm based in the IUCN office in, in DC, and the, the uh, director general was uh, Julia Lefebvre was visiting us, you know, and she very excited about this thing. She's very close and said, where is the Sargassus? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at least I'm on home ground at this I'm looking. So I'm good at, I've got uh, uh, a, sh a film to show you, which is a, a tribute to the Sargasso Sea, which was done, made by one of our donors just after the, uh, for the Hamilton uh, meeting, and which we showed there, and which he's <laughs> updated a little bit. But I'm going to show you that later because it upstages some of my other slides. So, uh, so what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to say a little bit about um, what we're trying to do um, and you know, sort of the origins. Um, some of the achievements, um, they pale into comparison with what you've told us you should be doing. <laughs> but, you know, we're quite pleased with where we've come. And then I'll talk a little bit about the commission, which I'm saying is a, a new paradigm for, for uh, high seas governance. Um, so there it is, that's where it is, you all knew that. Um, but that map at the top shows quite clearly, you know, nearly 50% of the globe is actually high seas. I think that shows it really quite clearly, and you see the, the EZ. So there we are, we've seen all these pictures before, actually, because we all stole them from the same places. <laughs> that one cost me a lot of money, that one in the middle. Um, um, and we've seen the threats as well. Um, and I've taken the um, submarine cables off as a, as a possible threat because we've actually got a workshop with the cable industry in October and they're extremely <laughs> excited. But it, it, the bottom left is the SEA map which shows you know, the, the garbage patch. So that, you know, one of the things I'd stress is that how useful and important the, uh, the information which you guys have been gathering all these years has been to us. You know? So it's really, uh, really been uh, extremely helpful indeed. And now this is the lady who's seen already. Uh, I guess whose idea this all was. So this is 2009, and that's Sylvia with Dan LaFoley from IUCN writing to the Premier of Bermuda saying, would you be interested in leading an initiative to conserve the Sargasso Sea? And you can't read that. If I make it too, so you can, it's boring. Yes. <laughs> that's basically what it says. So this is tremendous. So that's so having the government of Bermuda as a leader of this, uh, of this alliance, means that we have access to the international community. It means that the government of Bermuda can stand up at international meetings and uh, those to which it gets invited and actually represent these views. So this is a very important access into the, uh, to, to the international kind of governance structures. And the other advantage to this, although in some issues it's been a problem, is that the government of the Bermuda is still an overseas territory of the UK, and so we had to get everything cleared through the Foreign Office, and it means that the UK has to stand up when Bermuda can't. So we get a, they're only going to say things that they're prepared to say. So, so it's a good an issue. So these are the three things that we set out to do to achieve international recognition of the importance of the Sargasso Sea. Um, so that means official international, but people, as many as people, as many people who know about it, the better, but you know, official recognition of how important it is. And then working with, you guys summarised it a bit, but it's, a, it's not really legislation, it's working with existing international organisations, you've read it out, I remember, uh, to achieve better protection for the sea in accordance with the, uh, with the law of the sea convention. So there's a lot of existing organisations that have competence. We don't want to start, well, we Maybe we should be starting a new one, but we, it's not wasn't part of our project. It's a longer term. Give me another 30 million and I'll go for it. And then, you, I don't, well, I shouldn't say another 30 million. Uh, <laughs> and then use this as a model. So we, really the purpose of this is actually to, uh, to, to show if this can work. So what have we done? So this isn't really me beating my breast. It's all my colleagues who've been working on this. The first, as you've had in your, was the first thing which we really had to do before even the UK government and the Bermuda government would, would get aboard. Tell us why we need to do this. And so that's this, which you've all got a copy of with you. So that's a great uh, uh, collaborative report. Uh, September 2012, we actually persuaded the government of Bermuda to uh, declare a marine mammal sanctuary. Somebody already mentioned that. You guys have done good research on this. 
Um, and then to sign a, uh, an arrangement, that's Billy Causey from, from NOAA, to uh, sign a, a collaboration arrangement with uh, uh, a partnership arrangement with the Stellwagen Bank, Marine Mammal Sanctuary, up near here, uh, with Bermuda, and they've already got one with the Dominican Republic, so we'd like to make a, you know, a complete triangle there. You saw the migration group, so, so that's, that's a great step. And then this is the real success, which you've all picked up already, <coughs> is the, the, the uh, uh, EBSA, the Ecological or Biologically Significant Area. In October 2012, it was agreed by the Conference of the Parties that this should be described as an EBSA. It wasn't endorsed, but then none of the EBSA proposals were endorsed. That's an ongoing political issue we don't need to worry about. But that's the map that you've used, that leg map, which actually excludes the EZs. So that, that was a major, and the purpose of this, of the EBSA de, uh, process, was really to, uh, to identify areas which other organizations could use for protection measures. These are really significant areas that you ought to be uh, doing something about. So that was one of the biggest ones and one of the biggest high seas. It, it was the biggest for the first six months, and then well, there's another bigger area in the Pacific, but that's pretty good. Um, and then in the end of 2012, we actually got um, South Africa put it forward with the support of the UK and the US, a proposal with the UN General Assembly resolution. They, every year they do a long uh, resolution on issues relating to the oceans and North Sea. It sounds a bit geeky, doesn't it? But it's actually quite significant to get a proposal in saying, and this is it, noting the efforts of the Sargasso Sea Alliance led by the government of Bermuda to raise the awareness of the ecological significance of the Sargasso Sea. That's the text. My first text was 18 lines. That's what it ended up as, right? <laughs> this is negotiation. We tried to get it longer the second year, but we got some offers, some pushback. Once you get a, put your nose above the parapet, you start to get flack, right? So, but what, you can't say, well, we, they, we aren't interested in 2013 because you already agreed in 2012 that you were, so we've got at least got the... But that this year we got the Bahamas too last year the Bahamas as well as the UK and the US so tremendous good good support for us and we'll obviously hope that in 2014 we have even more elaborate text um, and then we were just invited just invited by the World Ocean Assessment Team this is a regular process within the UN to actually do a three-page piece it doesn't sound a lot but it's in you know in the, in the, the World Ocean Assessment. Uh, it's the only named ecosystem, so they've talked about coral reefs and seagrass beds, etc. And the only eco named ecosystem is the Sargasso Sea. So that's really that's again pretty geeky, but quite good, I think. <laughs> uh, and then we won the 2013 Sea Keepers Award, which uh, Sylvia came in. Sylvia was a previous winner of it. A um, little bit about the fisheries organisations. This is hard work. Right? This, these are political, highly political. They say they're driven by science. You actually said they were driven by science. I'm not quite so sure that's true. <laughs> Mostly political. Uh, NAFO, Northwest Atlantic, is fairly, probably one of the more, more effective of the, of the uh, fisheries organizations. Its regulatory area is the high seas area, which is in grey there. And this is the, oh, I've got a point, haven't I? Um, this is... This is the, the Bermuda EZ, and this is the, or, yeah, as I call it, EZ, and this is the, uh, the, the top of the EBSA. So here there are sea mounts, which, um, are, uh, that's the north, that's the corner sea mounts, and these are supposed to be close to fishing. So after the EBSA proposal was, was, was uh, description was, uh, was published, we went to, to uh, NAFO, and when I say we, it was actually the EU, because the UK doesn't have a separate right. Bermuda isn't a party to NAFO, the UK is very complicated. So the EU put on the table, on behalf of, of Bermuda, proposal to the EU for them to put forward a proposal, which was then supported by the EU, for them to look at measures to, pr uh, 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 to protect the Sargasso Sea within their regulatory area. The text is actually the next there. To comment and advise on whether the Sargasso Sea provides forage areas or habitat for living marine resources that could be impacted by different types of fishing, and on whether there is a need for any management measures included uh, possible closure to protect it. I'll just get back one. These areas they thought already were closed. It turns out there's been experimental fishing done by the Spanish, Ralph and Sino, or else they have actually been fishing there. 
And once that was discovered, it's taken a long time because they thought they had a regulatory regime and they, it wasn't quite what they were expecting. So we've actually opened that can of worms up and it's taken us, this was in 2012, it's now 2014, I think it's the last time I looked, and it's taken us a bit longer, but I think this summer we're hoping that we'll get some uh, a little suite of measures, which are call it, being called the Sargasso Sea Package. So that's, that's, that's made some progress. This one is more difficult. This is, this is the conspiracy to catch all tubes. Um, so there's the, so there's the EZ. This is basically the EBSA, and this is actually was put together by uh, Rashid Sumaila at uh, the University of British Columbia. And it, it's like a fish, isn't it? It's rather fun. Uh, and it's the, cup, the amount of fish which are landed. So the bluer it is, the less the fish. Uh, the redder it is, the more. So there's a lot of fishing here, which is in the Gulf Stream, which is probably the, U the U.S. Uh, um, swordfish fleet. I haven't been mentioning swordfish much, but they're, they're quite an important resource there as well. This is the whole non-commercial fishing. There's really no commercial fishing within the EZ of Bermuda. This, we reckon, is... Uh, well, let's say there's no legal commercial fishing. This is, this is we think, misreported IUU. So the guys are catching it here and taking it outside and reporting it as being here. So these are ICAT figures. Um, so fairly low catch, certainly to the east, in the eastern part. Um, and so what we're saying is if we translate the EBSA into ICAT squares, each of one degree here, the whole of the North Atlantic area has been divided up into squares. This is the square, these are the 11 squares we're talking about, which is just under, to under 2 million square miles. These are the areas that we think you should look at as to whether we should have special uh, measures uh, to put in place. And so we did actually get uh, a decision that this, it's the Standing Committee on Research and Statistics, which is the science body, will actually look at it, um, and look at available data and information. <coughs> this isn't what we proposed. We proposed some measures, and uh, this is what we can't. So it never, you never quite get everything you want to, but if you get anything, you're doing well. So this, it will provide an update on the progress of the work in 2014 and report back by 2015. We were hoping they'd do it last year and report in 2014, but this is pretty good. So uh, we've been producing quite a lot of, of information, which I'd be, could be happy to share on that. Uh, so these are some of the reports we've actually looked at. This is the values, which uh, Vera was talking about the uh, valuing this. This is a report done by the guys in the University of British Columbia. Uh, this is looking at what the, the inventory of species, and this one is right interesting because this is looking at uh, analysis of catches over the last 20 years, and figures are actually, which you guys got, I think, are probably for the whole of the North Atlantic, maybe on catches in the Sargasso Sea, but within that area that we looked at, it's less than 1% of the, of the catch of, of ICATs, reported ICAT species within those 11 squares is less than 1% of the North Atlantic. So the argument seems to me fairly obvious, so why do you need to allow fishing to continue? But if you're of the different persuasion, you say, why do you need to stop it if it isn't taking place? So that's kind of where we are with that. That's the next step on this. This is our delegation. That's Tammy Trott, who's the chief uh, fisheries officer in Bermuda. That's uh, uh, Howard, Professor Howard Rose, our science advisor. And uh, Brian Lovkos, who's been the consultant with us for this. He used to be the fisheries advisor in Bermuda. So, this is a, this is, so they have to sit behind the UK flag, you see, because they're <laughs> associate members. We're in, in progress on that. We're still talking, so I loved what you were, all your proposals about shipping, because we're still talking to the UK about what they're prepared to support. They're only going to prepare to support what the, what the uh, Bermudians will put forward, so we have an ongoing process discussing the sorts of measures that might be necessary, might be a, a, a possible. We took PSSAs off because the UK aren't prepared to support a big... Uh, a big, as I said, two million square mile PSSA, the first one in the high seas. Uh, Tony suggested maybe a smaller one. I think they might run with that, but we're looking at that. So we're looking at Marpole special areas. We're looking at routing, what I call routing, you call routing, I'm sure. <laughs> um, possible reporting and issues on ballast water. So there are other, and, then, and maybe, maybe a, 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 a non binding uh, MOU with the cruise ship industry, which is the main. Uh, they're the guys who put most of the vessels through the Gaza SOC into Bermuda. The Bermudians are supporting us on that. So we've done quite a little bit of work with them uh, on uh, analysing how much has been available. And then we've done this whole science series, uh, which is out on the website, which really a lot of stuff which has not been collected before. And look, this, this is your amazing collection of data. 
And it shows, one of the things I think, uh, first of all, it shows how much more garbage there is, but it also shows how, how much less oil pollution there is. The tar balls have gone down. So this is a real point that international regulation does work. If you actually regulate the amounts of operational discharges of oil, you know, you'll see some results. And this is would be the same with garbage, etc. Yeah, so this is a whole range of issues that we've looked at. Uh, and we've been writing about this in, uh, in the legal literature. This just came out in marine policy, a uh, huge one comparing. This is quite interesting, uh, looking at the, U the uh, US uh, National Marine Monument, and you think I can't pronounce it? And I can. Papa Hanama <laughs> uh, And it's, uh, we're comparing, you know, a static area with, within national jurisdiction with this, with this I guess, I've seen. Uh, so, and we've actually a couple of interesting new initiatives. Uh, I was just mentioning this to uh, Sylvia this morning. Um, the Conventional Migratory Species, which you didn't mention, um, Anguilla, the, the eels are obviously migratory species. They come from Europe down to the Sargasso Sea, uh, and they haven't had got many high seas species. So they're quite interested in the proposal, which we've now worked up. It's all ready, ready to go, to put forward to the parties to the Convention on Migratory Species uh, to actually make a proposal for Anguilla, Anguilla, the European eel, to be listed under Appendix 2. It won't stop catches, but what it would do is allow the development of a, a, an agreement or maybe a memorandum of understanding amongst the range states as to protection measures that they could they would group, uh, collaboratively agree to. And one of those could be spatial, designate the Sargasso Sea, the spawning area, as being protected for certain purposes. So that's, you know, we see that as quite an important spatial kind of possibility as well. But they're quite, expo they're quite excited about this. Um, the new Secretary General, the uh, Executive Secretary, is quite keen. And we've had some problems actually getting the EU countries to put this on the table. The EU process is very long and protracted. And so we've got, it's currently sitting on the desk of His Serene Highness uh, Prince Albert II today. And I hope he makes a decision by tomorrow because it's going to be in on Saturday. <laughs> so that's quite exciting. That would, um, you get, I get excited about all this stuff. Um, and we've also got a great uh, new collaborative uh, 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 initiative with the uh, Inter-American uh, Convention for the Protection and Conservation of Sea Turtles, mostly Latin American countries. The U.S. is a party. The U.S. was one of the initiators of it. Um, and we're looking at, we, we've just started, we've, we've got a, a paper just drafted, which we're having reviewed now, on the importance of sargassum and the sargassum sea for Atlantic sea turtles. And um, the objective is that that gets reviewed by the parties. If they agree to it, then they send it to ICAT. So we actually got somebody else voice, you know, 14 other countries looking at it. Um, and then, very exciting, this as well, NASA. Um, NASA have, vol have volunteered to actually help us to, pr pr to collect uh, oceanographic data on the Sargasso Sea. Initially, there will be historical runs of, like, 2012, 2013, and maybe moving towards, uh, towards real time, which could be used as a platform for um, maybe putting other data into it as well. We're talking to Google about how we could, uh, we could possibly, possibly do, do that. So that's quite now. So then on to the meat of the Hamilton Declaration. And there's somebody else you've seen. <laughs> the customer enthusiasm. You'll see her in the film as well. So, so, so Sylvia's the coach. She's not only had the idea, she's also the co-chair of our, of our uh, steering committee. She was in there and she gave the most fantastic speech at the Hamilton meeting. Hamilton meeting was, a, was a, as you again told us again, I feel like, God, I've been here already, you know, that you, you told us already this morning, a two-year process. We had two negotiating sessions, one in 2012, one in 2013. Even a non-binding declaration takes a lot of crafting to actually get everybody to agree. We actually got uh, all these governments uh, involved, quite, you know, quite a large sp spread of governments, and the European Commission were actually involved as, as negotiators as well, which was and they represent 27. So that's pretty important. They were quite major. Then all of the, these are all the, I put these up because it shows you that we've talk, been talking to all the kind of other government, government, intergovernmental processes that are involved. The Abidjan Convention in West Africa, you know, to the east of the process, the Caribbean Secretariat, CBD, CARICOM, the Oslo Paris Commission, which is the Northeast Atlantic Seabed Authority, etc. Um, 
And so what, what, what is the Hamilton Declaration? You've really, again, summarised it. It's not binding. They've agreed, the signatories have agreed to meet regularly. We're trying to do this virtually. We haven't got a large budget for this. So um, we're establishing the commission. I'll say more about that, of course, in a minute. And this is encourage, it's encouraging voluntary collaboration. So they don't have to do this, but then treaty obligations are usually fairly flexibly drafted as well. So it's a, it, 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 the fact that the <coughs> countries are willing to sign is the main thing. They're prepared to collaborate for the future. Small secretariat, which will probably be uh, the existing secretary of the Sargasso Sea Alliance, me and, uh, and my deputy, Kate Morrison, we call ourselves small and uh, lean and mean. She's the lean one. Uh, and then uh, the financial uh, mechanism. Uh, that's all the participants in the, uh, um, at, at the meeting, I think. Um, so you had to leave, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. I'm, in, but, I'm there in spirit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so these are all the, uh, the signatories are all in the front row. And that's really kind of. Uh, I mean, these are the people that, that attended. So not only, we only got five signatures. We were looking like we might even have 10 or 15 at some point. But we, the other 11 gov the governments came, but only, um, only five of them actually got instructions from their ministers to actually sign. But that's pretty good. So Bermuda, the Azores, Monaco, uh, United Kingdom, and the United States. Monaco has been a great leader on ocean <laughs> conservation issues. I was delighted to actually get them to come. They sent me one of their ambassadors. Um, and the Azores, I love the Azores because Portugal dropped out because he has some opposition. And the Azores said, we're an autonomous government of the Azores, we're going to sign it. Brilliant. Um, we also had some great collaboration from the international organisations as well. So that's bit, this is the structure. So we'll have a meeting of signatories. We're actually going to have a actual physical meeting. Then it mostly be done virtually. So only five at the moment, but we're hoping that numbers will increase. Well, we're pretty confident they'll increase. Sargasso Sea Commission which we say is an independent, part-time, science-based body. Uh, distinguished scientists and others of international uh, reputations of interest in uh, ocean conservation. Secretariat uh, with a financial mechanism. Uh, so the meeting of signatures really is to sort of explore ways in which this vision can be ex extended. So pursue collaboration and cooperation in further of this uh, furtherance of the vision of the declaration advice and guidance to the Commission, and that, by that we hope means support as well, and some of the governments have already indicated some degrees of support, and then take forward proposals. So the Commission comes up with ideas, like the ones I've just been discussing, puts it to the signatories and they say, okay, we could support that in IMO, or we, or we can't, or we change this, we'll do, you know. So it actually provides us with a, uh, um, uh, an interaction with a body of governments which actually can actually take something forward at the, into the international governance level. And it means when proposals are on the floor, Bermuda stands up and makes a proposal, you know, we get the UK and the US and other countries will actually support. That's, it's worked so far. <laughs> um, and then we have, we're envisaging collaborating bodies as well, which would be international organisations like the ones we've talked about, uh, and uh, uh, those who want to contribute to conservation in accordance with the pr principles of the Declaration. We haven't decided on a membership process for that. So then this is the, really the crux of the Commission. So the role of it under the terms of the, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the Declaration is to exercise a stewardship role, which is a, it's, a, it's not really, a, it's not a legal term. It's interesting that you chose that as the title, I love it, that you chose it as the title of your convention, um, rather than conservation. Stewardship is more than conservation, I think. So it's, a, it's, uh, it's not really legal for the Precisely, it's a nice, good, strong word. So it's exercise of stewardship role, keep its health and productivity and resilience under continual review. Uh, those words took a lot of negotiation, they sound easy. And then to develop a work program and action plans for the conservation of, this, of the Sargasso Sea uh, system. Um, we initially decided that we actually have five members in the first commission. Uh, we've already received eight nominations, an extremely well qualified. You know, like PhD is just even in entry level for this. It's really, really it's, it's a very impressive uh, uh, group of people who uh, on this list. Uh, we've had we're in the middle of well, in the middle. We're getting towards the end of May, so we're getting towards the end of the consultation process. We've had some comments from governments on, you know, on candidates, etc. They're all very uh, British and polite and very useful. 
Uh, so that, and that would be the government of Bermuda that makes the decision and they don't announce it on the 1st of August, if not before. So that's pretty good. Then the commission itself will be a legal entity under Bermudian law, so we're in the process of setting that up, and with the, sec the SSA secretariat. Um, so where do we go from here? So great, so like at the next phase of the project. So I guess as the alliance begins to kind of fade away, really, because the commission now takes over that role, it morphs, if you like, into the Sargassus Commission. Um, we've still got to get some more parties to this, not because we need to, but because we feel that it would be, we'd like to get all the countries around the Caribbean. So the countries that are, came to the meeting and already indicated they want to sign, we have to organise this, the BBI and the TCI, uh, the, the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, the Dominican Republic, who are still trying to, still, they were initially enthusiastic, Cubans I was just speaking to a couple of weeks ago. The Netherlands will, I think, sign, um, and they're also going to want to bring the other countries of the Net Kingdom of the Netherlands, so Aruba, Brunei, Curaçao, you know, all the other areas of the Caribbean. So we might get four signatures for that. So, uh, it's all good, you know, it's not number crunching, but it's good to get. And the Europeans, having a little bit of a dispute about this with the Europeans. Um, we've got the Fisheries Analysis for ICAP coming up for spring. This is going to be finished actually on the first of supposed to be when I get home. It should be on my desk. The text of the papers we're going to put up for ICAP. We've got the eel listing, which I just talked about. The Commission was appointed in August of 2014. And then we're planning the first meeting of the signatories and the Commission in October, October the 20th, 20th to the 22nd. We hope uh, Sylvia, you might put that in a little note in your diary. Um, and uh, and then we start with, so that would be the, and that's like the kickoff meeting. It's a bit late, but we're going to be at the Pocantico Centre, the Rockefeller Brothers Centre in New York, which is a fantastic location. Um, and develop protection measures for shipping us, and the collaboration starts with. So, well, all right, so I've got a minute or two left. So, this is really a new paradigm. No one's tried to do this before. Um, they've tried treaties, and as I said, with a budget in another 10 years, I'd work on a treaty too. But this is a way of trying to, 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 to fast track the, this process. Um, the, the, the Commission isn't an international organisation, but it's been established as a result of an intergovernmental process. And you have to be a lawyer to appreciate the distinction. But it's not an international organisation, it's governed by Bermudian law, uh, so it's supported by governments. And it has a wide range of other partners still, like the Alliance had before to support it, international organisations, academics and other institutions. It doesn't have management powers, because the parties made it quite clear, the governments when they were signing made it quite clear they didn't want it to say that. It, it can't have management powers in itself, because those management powers by international law are already given to other powers, like the International Mar it's a Maritime Organisation, to ICAT, to NAFO, etc. But what it can do is watch the way that they're being performed by others. So I said a strong voice for those who do so, you know, it's like our conscience. So it's a great experiment. Uh, thanks for all your enthusiasm for this. It's lovely to come. You all knew about this. Usually I'm happy to tell everybody when I first came. So thank you so much for your attention. And uh, uh, I've got a short film I can show you. And then perhaps if this item is time for questions at the end, it probably isn't. But can I move on to the some help? Just so this is a film which I sent David Shaw, who's on our executive, just retired from our executive committee, made this for us. Is this the curtains? Right one doesn't look like it. No, oh, this is... Right. Is... Yeah. He minimised it, so Sorry. that's the one. Okay. And then that puts it up. Great. <laughs> Across the world. Marine protected areas, 
have expanded significantly in recent years, but protected areas still represent less than 2% of world oceans versus more than 15% for the terrestrial world. Nearly all marine protection efforts have focused on areas lying within national jurisdictions, but far more than half of the world's oceans lie beyond areas of national jurisdiction. These open ocean areas are classified as high seas. The lack of effective governance for this, the world's largest ecosystem, has potentially far-reaching consequences for mankind. In this historic context, the Sargasso Sea Alliance was created in 2010 by the government of Bermuda and a collection of like-minded individuals and organizations. The Alliance has sought to improve stewardship for the vast and unique ecosystem of the Sargasso Sea and to create a roadmap for high sea stewardship worldwide. Sometimes referred to as the Great Golden Rainforest of the world's oceans, the Sargasso Sea is the world's only floating seaweed habitat. Most of the nearly 2 million square miles of this ecosystem lies in the high seas of the North Atlantic Ocean, some 200,000 square miles lie within the national jurisdiction of Bermuda. As documented in a scientific assessment by the Alliance, the Sargasso Sea is teeming with life. It is an open ocean refuge for marine wildlife that justifies ranking alongside legendary terrestrial sites such as the Serengeti Plains and Yosemite Park. It is an area of great biological importance and home to a rich community of hundreds of species. Iconic marine wildlife such as whales, dolphins, marlin, sailfish, sharks, tuna, swordfish, turtles, and manta rays inhabit or migrate through the Sargasso Sea. Dramatically declining stocks of bluefin tuna are believed to spawn in this part of the Western Atlantic. Endangered eel species spawn in the Sargasso Sea after migrations that can extend thousands of miles. Above the surface, the Sargasso Sea plays an important role in the lives of many seabirds. Thousands of feet below, sea mounds and ridges provide important and fragile marine habitats. Less visible but vitally important are almost unfathomably vast populations of phytoplankton and other microorganisms that generate oxygen, sequester <coughs> carbon, and otherwise contribute to vital ocean processes. The health of world oceans is under pressure and the Sargasso Sea is no exception. It is vulnerable to current and prospective threats ranging from overfishing to pollution and acidification. In response to these threats, the Sargasso Sea Alliance has worked with many countries and non-governmental organizations to create a precedent-setting vision and plan for conservation. As founding chair of the Alliance, I am pleased to report that representatives of supportive countries and organizations gathered in Hamilton, Bermuda on March 11, 2014, representing more than 300,000 kilometers of ocean coastline. In an historic moment for environmental stewardship, the Hamilton Declaration for the Conservation of the Sargasso Sea was adopted. The declaration nearly doubles the area of global oceans subject to such stewardship and creates a precedent for more sustainable governance of high seas ecosystems across the world. The event was widely reported and acclaimed. The <laughs> commission created by the Declaration will take on governance responsibilities and will seek to broaden support for other nations. This film is a tribute to the Sargasso Sea and to leadership in natural resource stewardship to benefit future generations. One more video, is that correct? I was told that you have a video to share. <laughs>
No, I was wondering if you could enlighten us. All right. Oh, there was. They changed the, yeah. The, you were talking about the blue halo. And this, the blue halo is a the, which is a proposal for the green protected area within Bermuda to run up against the same opposition. And opposition comes from fishermen who generally don't want to go down. The most vocal one, interestingly, is from potential seabed miners. There's apparently a group of people in Bermuda who think that, you know, that they can make a fortune from mining the seabed. This is 4,000 meters. But there are a few seamans. Uh, and so, I don't know whether this is viable or not, nobody really thinks that it is, but they are quite vocal and politically you know, uh, powerful, I suppose, and they went to see the, the Premier like a week before the meeting to say that we're worried about stewardship. My computer is mine. Does that mean that we're going to do ocean mining? I uh, think it's going to be bad, but it's so, still recognized. You know, despite my best it's efforts, one more time. I was waiting okay. that it didn't Take actually it affect well. yeah, the sources of Bermuda's EZ at all, uh, although um, that's you know, a separate one. Right, it's a conservation agenda. Uh, the, yeah, the, the, the government of Bermuda has a majority of one in Parliament. They can it's not made of him. But that, that's the kind of inside story. So, so they, that's why the so I guess if C A has no, taken don't out. Don't no. Yeah. And that was why one of the governments okay. came. Well, let me take it out. Well, they came. We tried downloading it to something else. So this is the pop, you know, real politics. <laughs> meeting, more came to the second, um, and most of them remain engaged. But, uh, uh, so we, we got, let's say, about 16 governments were actually, I say governments because the Bermuda, rather than countries, because Bermuda is not a country, it's a government, has a government, so the Azores as well, so I was very keen to get the Turks and Caicos Islands and, you know, the, the islands around the Sargasso Sea, which are self-governing, and Puerto Rico as well. I invited Puerto Rico. Um, well, yeah, that was my next question. Like, where did that fall? Yeah. So the, the, the representative was going to be the Secretary for Natural Resources, uh, <laughs> this, uh, yeah. but she was going to come and then she just couldn't come in the last minute. But, but uh, Puerto, Puerto Rico was actually going to come and sit with the US delegation and they uh, were going to, she wouldn't, they, the US system doesn't allow her to sign, or they wouldn't allow Puerto Rico to sign, but they would have come. She was, she was very supportive and we will continue. To collaborate with us. Well, it's a good question. <laughs> 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 yeah. 